Hello again. Uh, fall is here and Halloween is right around the corner, so I thought I'd put together kind of a fun geometry nodes tutorial. This is for a procedural pumpkin generator. I actually built this around a year ago, and since then, geometry nodes has come a long way. There's a lot more options for how to do things. So I went back and cleaned this up quite a bit, so I had something coherent to share with everyone. This first video, we're going to go through how to create the basic shape for the pumpkin. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how I created the material that I'm using. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to go straight into geometry nodes and move this up a little bit. Create a new geometry node setup, and then we're going to start right away. We're going to add in a Bezier segment. Plug that in right there. And I'm going to start this a little different than I usually do. We're going to set the endpoint to be on the origin. And then I'm going to connect a combine XYZ to the start point. And we'll duplicate that shift D for the start handle and the end handle. And then I'm going to connect the group input to the Z coordinate on the start point. Let's bring out the side panel here. I'm going to change this right away to be height, and that's going to be used to control the height of the pumpkin. Switch to front orthographic. And then I'm going to bring this height up to 0.3. And next, we're going to connect the group input to the X coordinate. We're going to use the same input for the X coordinate for the start handle and the end handle. And let's rename this to be bulge. This is going to be the bulge around the outside edge of the, of the pumpkin. So we're going to move that up and use 0.2. You can see this is uneven. It's kind of weighted to the bottom. The reason for that is our start handle and end handle, the point is being offset relative to the origin here. So what we actually want to do, if we just switch this to offset, now you can see the start handle is offset relative to the start point and the end handle relative to the end point. Next thing, I'm going to bring in a reference here. As you can see at the top around the stem, we've got kind of a depression. Same thing with the bottom where the, where the side comes around and it dips back in right at the center. So we're going to do the same thing for our pumpkin stay on front orthographic and I'm going to connect the group input to the Z on the on the start handle and let's rename this real quick to depression and if I move this up you can see we're getting that shape we want put this at point one so now it comes around the side and then dips back down towards where the center is going to be but if we plug that same input into the uh, into the end handle. You can see it just kind of moves that up. Uh, so we need to plug that into a multiply node. And we'll just switch this to negative one and plug that into the Z. And now we've got the same depression on the top and bottom. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to spin that around a curved circle. So if a s to curve circle and plug that into a curve to mesh and we'll plug that into the profile curve alt shift click so we can see that it looks like there's nothing there but if we rotate around a little bit you can actually solve this by changing the way you set up the the bezier segment but i've actually found it more intuitive to do it this way and then just rotate it so we'll use a transform geometry node. And if you come down here and just rotate this 90 degrees on the X, now we've got that profile that we're looking for. But obviously the shape still isn't quite right. That doesn't look anything like a pumpkin. So we're going to connect the resolution and the radius to our group input. And actually, I'm going to move those up. So the resolution is up at the top, same as the radius. And we're going to rename these. So this resolution, switch over to wireframe real quick. We're going to use these verticals, which is this resolution. 
to define where these creases are on the outside of the pumpkin. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to crease count. And I'm actually just going to change this down to like 21. It doesn't need to be as high as that to start with. Then the other thing I want to do, this radius, we're going to use for the stem radius, uh, which we'll do a little bit later. And then we can also just drop that down. I'm going to use 0 0.04. And then if we change back to the shaded view, you can see we pretty much got the shape we're looking for. We're gonna fill in this hole at the top with the stem, but we do have another opening down here at the bottom. So we're gonna to need to take care of that. And the way we're gonna do that, you could just use this curved circle and use a, a fill curve to, to fill that in and cover that hole. Uh, but what I want is to have the same these same lines that come around to just go straight to the center. So the way we're gonna handle that, let's bring in another curve to mesh. And we're not gonna put anything to the profile curve. I'll shift click so you can see what we're looking at. We're just gonna do a extrude mesh, plug that in. And it's not doing anything because it's set on faces and that doesn't have any faces. So we're gonna switch this to edge. If we zoom out, we can see what's going on. We can leave that node the way it is and then just put in a scale elements node. And switch this to edge as well. Now, if we scale at this point, you can see it's adjusting that center segment. We don't really wanna do that. So we're just gonna connect this top selection. And now if I go down and scale to zero, you can see we've got all those points coming together at the center. And then I can just bring in a join geometry node. Plug that in there, connect this up. And now you can see all those lines go straight from the side of the pumpkin straight through the bottom and into the center. And we go back to the shaded view. It looks like everything's connected, but you can still see there's kind of some artifacting around that edge. And the reason for that is because they're not actually connected at this point. So we're gonna do a merge by distance and connect that up. And now that artifacting looks like it's gone. So we've actually got that all connected together. So now what we're gonna do, I'll we'll just put all of this, all of this in a frame. We'll do control J, F2, and rename this as base shape. Now that we have the bottom of our pumpkin filled in, Let's take a look at the top. And like I said, what we're gonna do is fill this in with the stem. So let's go over here. Uh, I wanna start with a cone. Zoom out so we can see that. And let's bring in our group input because I wanna use the same crease count to define how many vertices we have around the outside of that cone. And then we're also gonna use this um, stem radius as the top radius and the bottom radius, which you might be curious why we're not just using a cylinder at this point. So let me just, the cylinder actually starts out centered around the origin. Whereas if we switch this to a Cone. It starts out with its base on the origin. That's just going to make it easier for us to um, to shift this around later to where it needs to be. Let's go back to this cone. Now I'm just going to add in another input here, and I want this one to be the stem length. And I'm actually going to move that up just below stem radius. And we can change that. Obviously it doesn't need to be two meters long. We're gonna set it to 0 
And I'm actually going to take, let's move this down out of the way a little bit. We're going to join our stem into the rest of the geometry here. And now you can see it's kind of buried at the bottom of that pumpkin. So we're going to bring this up. Let's put in a transform node. And I'm just going to connect this translation to a combine XYZ. Put that right there and then connect this height to the Z coordinate here. Uh, and you see that brings it up. And then if we switch back to shaded, you'll notice we've got some weird artifacting around the around the edge of that connection there. So the reason for that and I'll switch this fill type to triangles because we actually want that same as the bottom. We want to connect these lines straight into the center. But when I do that, you'll notice we've got all this extra geometry buried inside of there. So all we need to do, let's add in a delete geometry and plug in this bottom selector from the cone and then change this to just delete the faces. So now we're getting rid of all that extra geometry. And you can see when we when we do the shaded view, if I just mute this, you can see that artifacting comes back when we when we bypass that node. So that's actually that's the basic shape for the stem. So let's control J, put that in the frame, rename it to stem. And then we can move this down a little bit over here. Now, the next thing I want to do is change the shape of this stem because it doesn't look quite right. What I actually want is just a smooth curve here. And the way we're going to handle that, let's go down here. We're going to add in a set position node. And I'll put that in over here. And I can start with a position input. Bring this way back here. But you're going to need some more space. So what I want to use is the Z coordinate from the position. And I actually want this, I'm going to plug this into a map range. And I want it to go from zero at the top here down to one, because what we're actually going to do, we're going to scale everything and we're going to use an exponent. So if you remember, uh, if we have a zero here, one here, an exponent will always be one at one. So it's going to have this nice curve. We're just going to create a, we're going to use this to scale the outside of our stem. So what we can do is just to get that to be zero, we're going to bring in our group input. And we're going to take the stem length and add the height to that. And use that as our minimum. Minimize that. And then we're just going to plug our height straight into the maximum. So now we've got zero up here and one down here. Let me actually just get rid of all this now. And now we can plug this into a math power node. And then I'm going to plug this into a combined XYZ for both the X and the Y. Let me actually hold that. And then go to a vector multiply node. I'm going to move this down and connect this position across. And now I should just be able to plug this straight into the position. Oh, I did forget. So you want your Z coordinate to be one. Change this to wireframe for a second. Oh, we also need to remember in order for this to show what we want, we're going to bring up the side segments in our cone, bring that up to 10. And I actually want the fill segments to be three. Okay, so now we should be able to see if we bring this exponent up, 
and I've been using three. You can see we get that nice curve, but it's a little too tight at the top there. So what we're going to do, let's just add in a map range. Plug that in here. So now instead of going from zero to one, we want to go from, let's say about 0.25 up to one. And that should be the basic shape for our, for our stem. Let's throw this into a frame here. And we'll get a good look at that. At this point, we have the basic shape. Uh, but it looks a little bit more like a like an apple or a tomato or something. So we need to create those ridges around the outside that kind of define a pumpkin. And the way we want to do that, remember we're going to use these vertical lines, these vertical edges, to define the creases in between the ridges. So all we need to do is extrude out these faces in between those vertical segments. So let's just add in an extrude mesh node. We'll plug that in over here. Bring this way down to 0 0.01. But now with that individual checkbox filled in, it just pulls out each one of these faces individually. But if we uncheck that, then it makes this completely smooth and you lose all sense of those ridges entirely. So we just need to be really careful about which edges we split split up and how we extrude that. So let's bring in a split edges node. And now with all the edges split, it pretty much looks the same as having that individual checkbox. So we just need to decide which edges to split on. And we basically have two types of edges here. We have edges that radiate straight out from the origin. And we have edges that are perpendicular to that. So we just bring in an edge vertices node. And this will give us the position of both points on that edge. So if we take position one, we go to a vector multiply. And all I care about is the x and y. I don't want to know what the z coordinate of that position is. And we'll do the same thing for vertex two. And then we can just compare those to each other. So we'll plug those both into a compare node. And instead of doing an element-wise comparison, we're just going to compare the direction. And we can drop this down to zero and plug that into our selection. Now you can see we've got those ridges because we only split along the edges that radiate straight out from the center. But because we, because we split those apart, we need to be careful here. Make sure that we also join them together so we're going to bring in a merge by distance. And now the problem is it's actually connecting some of the top of that extrusion. So to avoid that, we're just going to make sure we don't connect anything that's on the top. So we'll do a Boolean knot, connect that to a selection. And now we maintain those bridges. Those um, actually we, we retain the creases all the way to the center. Next thing we want to do, I don't really want these to be extruded as far at the center as they are at the edges. So let's bring in, we'll use a position node here. And again, I don't really care about the X and uh, the Z coordinate. All I care about is how far the point is from the center. So I'm going to take this to a multiply uh, vector multiply and again just multiply x and y by one and then we're going to check the length of that so the length here is obviously going to be zero but we need to know what the length of the outside is 
That's going to be the length, the maximum length that we're looking at. So let's bring in, we'll use an attribute statistic node here. And I want to plug this length in as the attribute. And then we're going to go to a map range. And I want to use the maximum length as our from max. And then we can connect that into our offset scale. And again, that blows it way out because we're using one here. So if I change this back down to 0 0.01, now we've got very little extrusion happening at the, at the center and our maximum 0 0.01 happening out at the edges. And this is actually a great thing to control from our group input. So let's bring in another group input and we'll create another input plug that into the maximum, and we're gonna call this crease depth. Now we have control over that from outside. And now you can see these, these uh, ridges are actually pretty blocky. It's not exactly what we want that to look like. So let's do something else. Let's add in, we're gonna use a scale elements node So scale elements, and I just want to scale this one edge that runs across the top of those extrusions. So let's change this to edge. And I want to make sure we're not scaling anything that belongs to the side of that extrusion. So again, we're going to take this to a Boolean knot. I'm going to take the side to a Boolean knot. So anything that's not the side, which is just this one edge, and now when we scale this, you can see we're bringing in that top edge. But again, I don't want it to be the same distance all the way up at the top, at the center. So let's bring in, we're going to use another map range node. And I'm going to use the same length that I did before and the same maximum, plug that into the from max and we can plug this in to our scale. And at the center, I don't want to go all the way to zero. I want to leave something there. I'm going to put that at point two. And then I want to connect another group input to our maximum so that we can control this. We're going to call this crease sharpness because when we have it at one, we're going to have these really tight creases. And as we scale that down, we're going to smooth out the crease. So let's bring all of this together a little bit. And we can put that in a frame. And let's call this uh, ridge extrusions. There you go. I'm just going to add in a couple more things just to clean this up a little bit. You can see everywhere we started with a curve, it's already set to shade smooth. But we still have flat shading on everything that started as a mesh, which is mainly just this cone up here. So let's add in a set shade smooth. Now everything's shaded smooth. And I also want to add in a subdivision surface. And we'll set that to two. And we'll add in a set material node and set that to just the base material. And at this point, you have a pretty decent pumpkin. It's a little cartoonish, in my opinion. Um, everything is perfectly uniform, perfectly round, um, completely symmetrical. But if that's a look you're going for, it's actually pretty good at this point. You can just mess around with that material and it should be, it should be fine. But the rest of this is basically going to be about adding some randomness 
and changing things around so it looks a little bit more natural, a little more realistic. So let's add in a set position node. And I'm going to move that up over here. And the first thing we're going to play with is this ridge spacing or the crease spacing, depending on how you want to look at it. So at this point, they're all completely uniform all the way around the perimeter. We want to just kind of randomize that a little bit so it looks natural. Let's add in, I'm going to add in a position node over here and take that to a separate X, Y, Z. And I'll show you in a minute what we're doing, but for now, just plug this X into an Arctan 2 and plug the Y into the other socket there. And just so we have an idea of what's going on, let's add in a store named attribute right up here. And we'll call this demo. And we'll plug in that value there. Let's switch over to shading. Go to our top view. And I'm going to bring in an attribute node. Just bring in the demo attribute. We can plug that straight in. So now you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, basically, we're going from negative pi all the way around to positive pi. But I just want to switch that to be 0 to 1. So let's do, do a map range. And we'll change this from minimum to negative pi. And from maximum, we'll just do pi. So now it's going around that circle and just going from 0 to 1. And what we're going to do with that is we're just going to kind of use that to randomize the spacing on those on those ridges. So let's go to a white noise texture. We'll put that here. And we're going to take that. Actually, let's take this position here. We'll go to a vector rotate. And we'll use our white noise texture as the angle and plug that into the position. Now, you can kind of see what's going on. Let me change this to a wireframe. Oh, and actually, we're going to Alt Shift click on this set position just so we can look at exactly what's going on here. Now, some of these lines that are radiating out of the center just get kind of broken, and and it's not actually treating the whole line as the same same angle the whole way. The reason for that is this white noise texture. Basically, any variation at all, it can range from zero to one, from from one pixel to the next. So you need to adjust this map range so that it won't vary at all between between two points on the same line. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this from linear to step linear. And for these steps down here, I just want to bring in a group input. bring that in and use this crease count, which is the resolution around that circle, to the steps. Now, all of our lines radiating, it out, radiating from the center, they're all continuous all the way out. But you can see like here, we're getting stuff overlapping. What we're gonna do is just take this crease count and go to a divide node move this down to the denominator, we're going to use tau up here, which is just 2 pi. So we're dividing the entire uh, 360 degrees by the number of creases we have. And we're going to take that, let's see, we're going to put in a map range over here. So now we're going from a value of 0 up to, at most, that angle that we get uh, by dividing 360 by our crease count. So now you have some of these ridges are very tight at this point. And if we go back, let's look at our shaded view from the final over here. So these couple of ridges where it really tightened them down, 
don't look natural. Like this much variation isn't very realistic. So I'm just going to add in a another math node. Oops. Put in another math node, and we're going to change this to multiply. Basically, scale that. I think 0.5 actually looks pretty good. You could actually go down lower than that, maybe. But let's leave it at 0.5 for now. And I want to add in a little bit more control. Let's change this to two dimensional. And then I'm going to add in a combine XYZ. Add that in right here. And we're going to add in a new group input and plug that into the Y here. And I want to change that to be seed so that when we change this on the outside, you can see it's going to change the, the random seed for that, for that ridge spacing. So now we can have multiple pumpkins and then I'll have a different, slightly different variation on that ridge spacing. I think, let's see, we can actually get rid of this at this point. And let's put all of this in a frame. Control J, F2, we'll call this ridge spacing. Okay, the next thing I want to do to make this look more natural is this stem is still perfectly round, which is kind of weird. Uh, so let's actually bring in our reference again. And if you look over here, we've got a couple of stems here. You just want to pull out some random points on this. And you see it kind of corresponds with where those ridges are on the rest of the pumpkin. So we're going to try and emulate that with our pumpkin. I'm just going to move everything out to this side here again. And we're going to add in another set position node. Bring that up here. And then let's go back. We're going to add in a position input. Take this to a separate XYZ. And we're going to do the same thing. Plug this into an arctan2 and plug in the Y. And then we're going to plug that into a map range and do the same thing. We're going to go from negative pi to pi. But now instead of using a step linear, we're just going to change this uh, to max. We're going to bring in our group input and plug in our crease count to that two max. And then we should be able to plug that in. Oh, actually, what we're going to do let's see, so I can see from here, I want to treat each of these together. So what I want is to have this line together and then this line over here together. So we're going to add in a math snap node and we're going to set that to two and what that's going to do is now these two points will be uh two these two will be four these two will be six you get the idea so we'll plug that into our white noise texture and bring that to a combine xyz and use that output for both the X and the Y. And then bring that up to a multiply. And we can plug our position in there. And plug this output into the position. Now, you can see right away we've got an issue. Make a little bit more space. We're not just adjusting our stem right now. Oh. Also, we need to change this Z to be one. So now we're not just adjusting our stem, we're adjusting 
the geometry for the entire pumpkin. So in order to fix that, let's go back to where we joined in the stem. I'm actually going to put in a store named attribute here. Plug that in right there. And we're going to make this, instead of a float, we'll make it a Boolean. I'm going to name this stem mask and make that true. So now everything from this original stem geometry is going to have this set to true. So I can go back over here, bring in a named attribute node, set this to our stem mask and plug that into the selection. So now we only adjust the stem geometry and not the rest of the pumpkin. But now I also want to change. So I don't want to go all the way down to zero. So I'm going to add in another, bring in a, a map range here. Hold control and I can just move these down. Plug that into the value. Now, I think I want to bring this to minimum up. I think we're going to set that at like 0.6. And then we can actually move this up. We'll do, we'll do 1.3. Now you see we've kind of got that variation. It looks pretty close to our reference. I'm also going to do the same thing we did for the ridge spacing. So let's add in a combine X, Y, Z. We'll plug that in here. This doesn't need to be three dimensional. It can just be two. And we can plug the same seed in for the Y value. So now again, we can just control the shape of our stem from the outside. And before I move on, I just want to go back. There's one more thing I want to change about our stem to add make it look a little bit more natural so right now this transition from the stem to the pumpkin is extremely smooth i want to make that a little sharper and the way i'm going to do that is right up here in our exponential stem frame i'm going to move this back i want to add in so we're going to do a math node up here and just add in so it changes where this uh, where this zero is. So if we add just a little bit to that, it has a much more natural looking shape for that transition. But in keeping with our randomness theory for making this look natural, we're going to add in another noise texture. We can make this four dimensional and plug our, plug our seed in to make that also show up randomly. And we'll plug this into a map range. And we can plug that into that add node. Now, change this to 0.25 to 0.75 and basically that's because this noise texture is generally generally changes around um, around the halfway point so it's usually around 0.5 so if you change it to 0.25 to 0.75 you'll have a bit more variation and I want to drop this down I don't want it to be quite so high let's change this down to 0.3 maybe 0.4 and then we can change this scale and move this up to 30, just so that it's not the same all the way around. Now you have a bit more of a natural transition from the stem to the pumpkin. So let's move this up, bring that in, and then we can go back. Let's put all of this in a frame. F2 and call this stem distortion. And let's zoom in on that so we can get a good look at it. 
At this point, we are almost done modeling this pumpkin. Let's move this back up in line and we'll take a look at what we have so far. So the finer details, we've got some of this ridge spacing randomized, we've got our stem kind of random, but if you look at like the macro scale, it's dead center and symmetrical and it looks pretty even overall. So what we're gonna mess with now is kind of those, those macro level um, distortions just to make it look asymmetrical, lopsided, and overall just more natural. Uh, so let's add in, we're gonna do a set position. I'm gonna plug that in there. And the first thing I wanna do is just kind of bend this, the whole pumpkin overall to one side. The way we're gonna do that, let's bring in another position input. And I'm going to take that to a rotate, vector rotate. We'll plug that straight into the position. And if I start playing around with this, oh, I want to rotate it around the x-axis. So if we start playing around with this, you can see it's just going to spin around that x-axis. What we want to do is not affect the bottom of the pumpkin and only bend the top of it to this angle. So we're going to control that with the Z coordinate. So we'll do separate X, Y, Z, and then take this Z coordinate to a map range. And now we can plug this in. And now you can see we're starting to bend this. I want to make sure though, bring in our group input. So I want to make sure that at the top, we're bent to the angle that we're inputting. And this is another great candidate for another input. So we're gonna call this bend angle. And now we can control this angle. And you might also wanna restrict this to, I guess, negative 0.5 to 0.5 is about as far as you would wanna bend this. Now you can see you can just move it back and forth. I think around 0.2 is probably a good number to have that bend set at. Let's bring this in. I'm gonna put a frame around all this. Control J, F2, and we can just call this bend. And move that in a little bit. Now the last thing I wanna do is just use a noise texture. Because if you look, I'll bring in our our reference again. This is over here a good a good look. This rough texture, that lumpy distorted texture on the outside. And then I don't know if there are any good examples of like a macro level, but just to make it a little lopsided. So we're gonna have textures on a couple of scales here. And we just need to make sure that we do this after our subdivision surface. Otherwise we're not gonna have enough geometry to show any detail. So let's move these over and plug in another set position node. And I'm gonna use a position input, plug this into a noise texture, and then we can plug this color right into the offset. And this is a common thing with the using a noise texture like this, you need to adjust uh, the output. So I'm gonna take this color, first of all, we'll just go to a vector scale. So if I bring this down, you can see it goes back to that origin point, but as it moves up to a scale of one, now you're centered at about 0.5 on the Z axis, 0.5 on the Y, and you're also 0.5 on the X. That's because this noise texture outputs a value from zero to one for all of those different coordinates for the X, Y, and Z. So they average out to about 0.5. So to fix this, all we need to do, let's just duplicate this scale node and we'll change this to subtract. And then we can just highlight all three of these values, change it to 
And now it doesn't really matter what the scale is. It's going to stay centered on the origin where we, where we had it to start with. So now we can do a couple of things with this. We can change and distort this at a large scale. So I'm going to make this 0.5. And then we can bring this down to around, I guess, 0.2. And if we bring this roughness up maybe to 0.8. Now you can see as we move around this, you just got kind of a lopsided, slightly distorted overall shape. But we don't have any of that lumpy texture, that detailed texture. So what we can do for that, let's just duplicate all three of these. And I'm actually gonna make some more room here. Duplicate one of these scales, just change this to add, and we'll plug this in. And then make sure we have this position plugged in. And we can also just take this, the scale for this, let's move it up to 20. And obviously we're gonna need a much smaller scale here. So let's move this scale down to 0 0.01. And I'm gonna move this detail up to eight. And it's giving me a little bit of that texture, but I think I want to jump the level for the subdivision surface up. Now you can really start to see that, that detailed bumpy texture for the outside of the pumpkin. And then one more thing, I'm gonna change this large scale noise. We're gonna move that to a 4D texture. And the reason for that, we're gonna bring in our group input again, and we're gonna reuse the same seed value that we had before and plug that in for that W input. And now that seed value will actually affect kind of that overall shape of our pumpkin. So as you move through, it's gonna be lopsided in different different ways as we cycle through there. But overall, that gives us a pretty natural looking realistic pumpkin. So I'm just gonna frame this up and we'll call this distortion. And that should be pretty much it for a reasonably realistic pumpkin. You could also, if you want to, add this to our group input and call this macro distortion because you might not want to have that large scale distortion cranked up quite so high. So we can bring that down to even zero just to turn it off completely or bring it up to 0.2 again, just so we have some, some variation to that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Share your results. I absolutely love to see that. But do keep an eye out for the next video. I'll show you how to procedurally unwrap and texture the pumpkins. Uh, otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.